So you guys are in for a real treat today as I'm upgrading my baby garter snakes from this to this beautiful bioactive natural setup. We're going to go out in the wilderness, pick some leaf litter, some branches. I'm going to show you the whole build today. It's going to be amazing. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to another video here at Cloud Colubrids. This is going to be a really exciting video. I'm building a bioactive enclosure for my garter snakes, my pair of California red-sided garter snakes. It is coffee time. I got that special sugar. That special, special sugar. This is some extra special sugar. That should do it. Throw it in there, put a little bit more. All right. Oh yeah, this is looking really, really good. Just like mommy used to make me when I was a kid. All right guys, so I found out yesterday that I have viewers watching my channel from other countries that are way less fortunate than ours. Even some are in war zones and they're still watching the videos. So um, I just wanna make a toast to everybody who's having tough times that they'll make it through. And to all my viewers who watch the videos, even if you don't watch the videos, toast to you. So now I'm gonna show you the plants we're using for this amazing California red-sided garter snake enclosure. Now all of these plants are low to medium light plants and we don't want plants that require too much water because this is not gonna be a high humidity tank. If the soil remained moist, that could be bad for the snake's belly. It could get scale rot. So we wanna keep everything nice and dry. So we're using some succulents and plants that don't need a lot of water. And remember, we want to have plants that can deal with the snake traveling through and over them without just crushing them. So these are pretty tough plants. So if you're getting your plants from a department store or nursery, they always have fertilizer in them, so we gotta remove that. They also might have bugs in there. So we're gonna just gently get the plant out of the container. And we wanna strip the plant down to the bare roots or as much of the soil we can get off as possible without damaging the roots. So you see I'm just tickling that soil off and that's what you want. Now we're just gonna hose it down, get whatever is left off of there and voila. All right guys, so we got the hardest part out of the way, cleaning the plants and sanitizing the leaf litter we collected from the wild and the wood. If you wanna skip that process, you could just order plants from Josh's Frogs or BioDude. Those are already fertilizer free and you could get leaf litter online as well, but I went the cheaper route and now I just wanna show you what I'm using for the soil. So I'm using this jungle mix. I got this at Pet Supermarket. I'm using this orchard mix, Home Depot. I'm using this sphagnum moss, Home Depot, Lowe's, any department store or nursery. And last but not least, Eco Earth. This is basically coconut core from ZooMed. You could get this at any pet store. I got this at the Reptile Show, Repticon Tampa. It comes in a brick. 
you could buy it already bagged as a soil form, which is a little bit more expensive. It's cheaper when you buy it by the brick, you just gotta soak it in water. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Hey guys, I'm down here. So this is what the brick of core looks like when you take it out of the package. But if you try to break it up to put it in soil, it wouldn't work. So you put that in there. I use spring water. You could use tap water, but I like using spring water. Definitely use spring water if you're gonna use it for like frogs because they absorb the water through their skin. Snakes not so much, but we always use the best here. Just pour that on. All right guys, 200 years later and this is what it looks like. Now it's been about an hour since I fluffed it up with the water and look at the consistency. Beautiful. That whole gallon of water and this is two bricks. This will be perfect for the size tank we're using today. So the perfect way to spend your day is to go out in the wilderness and see what you need for your bioactive enclosure beautiful sea grape leaves, perfect leaf litter for this type of an environment. They come in all different shades, sizes, and they stand up really well. Look at that nice wood. You could use it as long as you sanitize it. Just come out here, look around. It gives you ideas of what you want to do with your bioactive enclosure, and it's a great way to save money and just relax. Enjoy the scenery and enjoy your day. So I got a couple of things at Repticon, like a couple of cork crowns that we have inside. I'll show you that as we do the build, but nothing like getting some stuff from mother nature. I got this beautiful aged wood, really, really nice and natural from mother nature. And this nice twig, perfect for climbing. We sanitize these in the oven with the leaf litter for one hour at 300 degrees to kill anything. Some people boil them and then bake them. I just baked them. Right, guys, so now I'm pumped up. I had that coffee, it hit the spot. Now we're gonna go, I'm gonna have the camera right in on the tank and I'm gonna do a voiceover so I could speed up the process while I talk because you don't wanna sit there for a half hour while I build this tank. I'm sure you guys have better things to do, but uh, I'm excited so let's go inside and get this build done. And again, the goal with this is to be as natural as possible. We're not trying to get fancy and uh, anything like that. Just keep it natural and simple. So to make this bioactive, you're gonna need some isopods. These are the powder blues. You can see some running around down there. I also got some powder oranges. Really, really look nice. And they're just gonna populate in this tank. Now the only thing I need is some springtails, which I don't have on hand. I'll have to pick that up at the next show. So I use this exact blend for my Brazilian rainbow boa and the isopods and springtails are going crazy in that tank. I'm having great success. The plants are doing really well and it stacks up very similar to the ABG mix. You could check out ABG mix on Google. It's probably the standard, the most popular mix. Very good, but you need a lot of ingredients. And this has almost all those ingredients, minus the tree fern fiber, and the ratios are slightly off, but this works so good and it saves a lot of money. Now you wanna give a minimum of three to four inches of soil in this type of an enclosure. Give the plants a lot of room for those roots to grow. And because this is gonna be a drier climate, I'm not using the hydrogen balls or rocks on the bottom to separate where the water will be sitting on the bottom because we're not gonna let this soil get that wet. We're gonna be using that nice, beautiful plastic Tupperware as a water ball. We're gonna bury that. Hopefully the plants kind of grow over it. And now we're gonna use the rubber plants, the rubber tree, put it in the back. Now these are gonna be our tallest growing trees. You wanna put the tallest growing trees to the back, it'll fill in like a nice, beautiful, natural looking landscape. Those will be like the trees in the back. And then on the other side, where I'm planting right now, that's gonna be my basking area. 
I'm gonna keep my succulents and plants that need it a little bit more hotter because I'm gonna keep the heat basking bulb on that side. So those are gonna be nice and dry. So you guys have been great. I really enjoy doing these videos and I gotta do Elvira's tank next. This was gonna be the tank I was gonna use for her, but uh, I'm actually dealing with animal plastics. I wanna get something a lot bigger than this. You know, she gets six to seven feet. Nice amount of size to her. So the garter snakes, three to four feet max, and they're very slender snakes. So this will be more than enough for two snakes. Now I put the two cork rounds in there. That'll be perfect for hiding. I'll put that nice branch. And you see, I keep the water bowl opposite of the basking area because that nice heating basking bulb will definitely heat up the water and make it, even make it evaporate really quickly. So you always wanna keep those on opposite sides. And I can't forget that nice leaf litter, those beautiful sea grapes. The sea grape leaves just look beautiful. And I, I found a couple of other leaves out there that I'm adding in there. You know, give it a nice little mix. And those last for a long time, so it'll be a while before I have to replace them, but they provide a hide for the snakes, a hide for the isopods. And as they break down, the isopods feed on them. And it also provides real nutrition to the soil. Now I'm adding the isopods in. I was supposed to add them and then add the leaf litter. I forgot, but it's okay. And you can see them in there moving about. They're gonna repopulate like crazy. And I got these nice, little pine cones that I'm adding, and those will be eaten by the isopods as they break down. Beautiful, it came out so nice, and now we're just gonna give it a nice mist. So we're gonna mist it down real good every two to three days, and let those roots just grow in beautifully into the soil. And you know what the beauty about this? It's your choice. You can get as creative as you want. It's almost like a pad and you're gonna do artwork and you can do whatever you want. It's just customized to your very needs and the needs of your snake. You guys gotta try it and it's really rewarding to just walk into the room, see something that you made and the snakes love it. All right guys, so the build came out beautifully. Now I'm just gonna wait about three weeks, let those plants grow in nicely, the roots go, grow into the soil. I got that nice light on there. It has a bulb from Germany, Arcadia, just for plants. And the other one is a Reptisun 5.0 UVA. You can grow all kinds of special herbs with that. It's meant for hydroponics, so it'll definitely be good for the tank. I'm glad you guys hung out to watch. And in a month or so, when I put the snakes in, I'll do a video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I to show you what we're gonna be. It's a hard brick, you can't break it. Well, can't break it, well, well, you could break it, but it's a hard brick. Maybe I'm just strong. We could use half a gallon, but. <laughs>